we're here, baby. I don't even have words, man. And that's kind of crazy because we're doing a podcast. Yeah. So I should, you know, be well with words. But right now, I'm, I'm speechless. A lot of hard work. A lot of money. Yeah. I think, I think that's the main thing. Like, people don't realize how much money it takes to start a podcast. Depending on, like, the level, the quality you're going for. And um, we're, we're definitely about quality. Yeah. Over quantity. Absolutely. Some people are rushed to put a product out, and they put out a crappy product. And yeah, we've been working on this better part of a year. All we put, we put in all that money, all that time, all that trial and error. Definitely a lot of trial. Because mind you, remember, me and you know nothing about recording, audio, nothing. Straight. Nope. Google. YouTube. That's how you learn. Google and YouTube. <laughs> and we did all that work, spent all that money, did all that research to start. <laughs> that's, you know what I'm that's not even like. <laughs> but I mean, it's been in, you know, talks for a while now. Yeah. Um, but you called me up because we would always be like, hey, when are we going to start the podcast? When is it? Well, I'm ready. You ready? No, you ain't ready. I'm ready. <laughs> and then that one day, you called me and you're like, Yo, when are we going to do this podcast? And I was like, I'm on my way over. I just came over, and we bought the mics and the tripod. Everything. Everything. And uh, it's great. I'm, I'm grateful to your wife because, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, you know, it's taking a lot of time from her. I appreciate that. And you know, wives normally aren't willing to give that time. No. You know, especially in our circumstances. Yeah. So, I've been looking forward to this for like this has been the number one thing I was looking forward to today to, to today for. But you know the thing I was looking forward to the second most. I was looking forward to the most. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We here, baby. Salute. Salute. Hmm. What do you think about that? It's a good. It's not a. It, it's it's not it's not like. It's not like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's in the back of the throat. It's just real smooth. Yeah, and what is this again? Uh, Jack Daniels, Sinatra Select. It's a good special occasion bottle. Man, that's... I'm I'm just like so happy, bro. <laughs> and I'm not even I'm not even just talking about the podcast the launch day. Just to be drinking with you again. It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. I felt like I felt like I had lost you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm I still Man, showed up to everything. True, but I had to like pull you to show up. Not really. I had to make. I had to. First of all, the last thing you came to, I had to make like a backdoor deal with you. To yeah, get you to show that's up. fair enough. Yeah, but that was also the day of the Ravens Steelers game, which is the biggest rivalry in football. Which I guarantee, and that's why I was there. And actually, no, actually, that wasn't the last thing. The time before that, the the party, the Halloween party. Yeah, I had to make a deal with you. Oh yeah, for the Javante Davis fight. Yeah. yeah. Which also turned out yeah. great. That was yeah. <laughs> man. Tank. Boop. Damn, that man. uppercut. Hey, everybody, watch out! That <laughs> uppercut, mean. Oh man! I might hit somebody with it. This shit hit. I've been practicing. This shit hit. Mm. I feel like Nick would enjoy this. Yeah, I'm sure he would. He's a big Frank sure he would. fan. Yeah. He's actually who put me on the Frank actually. Yeah. 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 He's that dude. Yeah. He's he's that dude. <sighs> um, but yeah, it's been seventy five days. Talk about that, man. 75, what is it? 75, 75 hard. 75 hard. Yeah. So, Mind you, everybody, he tried to get me to do that. And he said, hell no. No. Nah. So it's uh, it's like it's like a mental toughness regimen. So for 75 days, you have to work out twice a day for 45 minutes. One of the workouts has to be outdoors. <clears throat> you got to read 10 pages a day of a nonfiction, you know, self-helpy type mm-hmm book and it's got to be physical pages it can't be like on a kindle or audiobook okay um 
you got to drink a gallon of water a day. You got to take a progress pick a day. Um, book, progress pick, two workouts, gallon, reading. Oh, you got to follow a diet. You can follow any diet, but you got to follow the diet. Mm -hmm. um, and then no alcohol for 75 days. And if you fuck up any one of those things, you start over at day one. No matter, even if you're on day 74. Yeah, a good friend of mine, Perp, my God, bless his soul, because he's one of the reasons I didn't quit, because he, you know, he came at us and he was like, yo, I fucking, I think the first time he was like, I came up eight ounces short of my gallon. Just honest. And then sent the, we send a picture on the app that says what day you're done with, and the next day you put day one, and we were like, oh, shit. He just he did it and he just kept going. So he's he's not finished yet, but he's better than me because had I messed up, I would not have restarted. It would not have happened. But yeah, hey, you would have been like, hey, we gonna day fourteen. All right, day fifteen tomorrow. Yeah, I, I mean, no, I would have just stopped. Oh, you would have just been done with it. Completely. Yeah. So. Well, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud that you stuck through it. I appreciate it, man. Uh, the, I lost like nine pounds. Um. I learned a lot through the readings that I did. I read Outliers. What, yeah, what, what did you read? I read Outliers, which is a really good book, and I read Anti Fragile, uh, which is a really good book. I, rec I definitely recommend them. the The author's names are escaping me right now, but it wasn't. It was. It was definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. And From a physical standpoint, or a mental just standpoint? period. Because, sure, we've all been through a lot. Of, like I've been through a lot of shit. I've dealt with a lot of shit. But mm -hmm. like I've always had. Like I had to. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. Every day, at any point, I could just be like. Eh. And just poured up a shot, or I would lay in bed, and I'd remember sh my phone would go off. Or I'd remember, ah, oh, shit, I'm a quarter gallon short, and I get had to chug a quarter gallon of water, mm -hmm. and I'm up all night peeing like an old man. Um, but I'm really glad I did it. Like to, I'm the best part of it was um, proving to myself that I could. Yeah. Seventy five days is so long time. Yeah. Um, even though there were so many times I was ready to just say, you know what? Fuck it. Eh, but mm -hmm. I didn't. And shout out to Ronnie and, and Chance and Purple and Nelson and Chris and all them boys. We, we all did it together and we held each other accountable. So here's my before and after. You ready for this? <laughs> I don't think I'm ready. I don't, I don't ready think for I'm... The, here's the before. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Do it, hold on. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> that that can't be you. That's me 75 days ago, bro. That can't be my dog. That's me 75 days ago. Bro, you look bad. I know. I just know how to dress and like posture myself so like it's not noticeable. And then here's... Hold on, we're not going to skip past that. No, we, 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 you're we, talking to me, baby. We, you, we, I, was, I also had just woken up, so that explains nah. my hair. But <laughs> Come on. Don't don't give me the, the the ladies' excuse. Oh, I haven't done my makeup yet. Man. Stop, bro. That was that's bad. Yeah. That. Do you see yourself? Every day. That's what I'm saying. I had to take a picture every day. I know, man. And I don't even have to see the picture now. I can just see you sitting here next to me, and yeah. I can't believe you look like that. Yeah, and that's the after. Oh yeah. I see you. Yeah, definition. Uh, uh, watch out now. Watch out now. Hey, stay away from my wife, man. <laughs> all right. Hey, moms, daughters, all y'all, stay away. <laughs> he, he'll charm you with the smooth talk, <laughs> and then now he got the body to go with it. It's over. Shut the game down. All right. So, so uh, as of late, I wasn't the only drinking buddy you lost, though. Sadly, no, and it, and, and it was so rough because it all happened at the same time. Um, you know, Heather told me that she was pregnant. She was with child. You gonna be a daddy? How's that feel? What's it feel like, man? What's that roller coaster of emotions like? You know, honestly, it wasn't as bad as I as I thought it was gonna be. To be honest, you with thought it was gonna be bad. Yeah, I thought because I was. You're never really ready. To have a kid, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, some people make up in their mind that they want to have a kid, but you're never prepared to because it's a new journey. You know what I'm saying? It's something that you've never experienced before. And on top of that, at the time, you know, me and Heather were deciding 
that we're gonna wait. We're decided, you know, let's actually enjoy each other, enjoy actually being married because you know I've been gone so much since yeah. we've been married. So it's like, all right, we're gonna enjoy each other and just do us, and then, boom, find out she's pregnant. And initially, I always imagined that day me freaking out and just kind of being been a hot mess. But I had just had a conversation about how. Actually, that same day, I had just had a conversation about how I was pretty much okay if Heather found out she was pregnant, you know, if we found out. And I would just, you know, kind of figure it out. But it's honestly, it hasn't. The only difference is, is that now I have a designated driver. Hey. And I don't have someone to drink with at home. Yeah, because she's, and Heather's basically one of the dudes. Yeah, she's she's one one of the She's one of the guys. She's one of the homies. She's that that's chick. actually that's my number one homie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's and, the whole reason I wanted to do this podcast. Hopefully, one day I get famous, <laughs> opens the dating pool up, <laughs> then I can find me one. Hey man, it I got lucky for sure. Yeah, for sure I got lucky, yeah. and it was one of those scenarios at the time that she had those qualities that not many people our age had. Yeah, and so well, y'all got married what when you were twenty? Yeah, we we're twenty. I was 20, she was 21. Yeah. Okay. She's a year older than I am. So, it was like, at that time, she's on a wavelength that most people, it's, most people weren't on that wavelength, so it was kind of like, I gotta snatch this up. Yeah. It was like, it's like having a number one draft pick, and yeah, you got the pick, don't pass it up. Don't yeah. pass up DK Metcalf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it was, it was a rough time, bro, because, you know what I'm saying, I lost her as a drinking buddy, and then my other drinking buddy <laughs> does a seventy-five day challenge, man. It's just like my my world was in turmoil, man. Because yeah, well, in my mind, when I when I heard, when I found out she was pregnant, I was like, okay, now I got somebody to drive me and Bruce around. <laughs> I got somebody to come pick me up from Bruce's house. Like we lit. When uh, when did she do? January twenty-first. That's right around the corner. Yes, and I- this time has flew by. I, I, that's the other thing too is that I didn't think I thought you know the process would be more um life changing I guess you would say and it would it like it went by fast I felt like it was just yesterday that I found out that she's pregnant yeah she just like left the, I remember when you told me first that was a day yeah I was that was one of the happier days I had so how, I mean, you feel good about having a little girl? At first, I was scared. I'm not gonna lie. I'm yeah. not even gonna sit here and act like I wasn't scared. You know, initially I was I was fine with the initial of having a child. Then once I found out it was a girl, there was a a abundance of emotion that I went through. You know what I'm saying? Because there's things that you deal with when having a daughter that you don't necessarily have to deal with when you're having a son. Yeah, and especially with me being a man you know what I'm saying and necessarily not understanding the or being on the same wavelength as a woman because I'm not a woman I don't know what I don't know how it feels to be a woman growing right. up you know what I'm saying yeah so from that standpoint of just not knowing and you know, I like to be in kind of control so but I'm excited man girl dad I feel like I feel like that's like the trend now is for you know, girl dad, girl dad, girl yeah, dad, and elevating your daughters. So, absolutely, that's what's up, man. So, um, y'all got the the package from the registry that I sent y'all. Yes, we did. Yeah, so that was, that was pretty close. I like registries because you know it's it's the parents' opportunity to say, yo, this is what we need. Mm-hmm. But I don't like registries because there's no personal you know what i'm saying like you chose that out which is good like i want you to have it so i had to get you something else oh lord because <laughs> it's, it's something small something slight but it's just to show you that i listen and i'm pretty sure this wasn't on the registry Say, you remember saying that, right? Yo. <laughs> so, for those who don't know me, 
I oh so I got waves. My joint spinning. Spinning, spinning. Wave Makes check. Sick. Nah, we don't do no wave check. <laughs> but my joint spinning, I right? So I always make this joke of how my kid gonna be walking around just like me, whether it's a girl or a boy. And I was like, I got waves, so my kid gonna have waves. And when we found a girl, everyone's like, ah, oh, now she can't have waves. Yes, she can. Stop it. She gonna have waves. My man's right here looked out for your boy. <laughs> got a kitty do rag. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, that's, yo, that's funny. Oh my goodness. Yo. <laughs> Only you would come up with some. My man's got <laughs> baby E. When you see this, Uncle Bruce got you the, your first do rag. So when you walk around <laughs> spinning, killing them, you know where it come from. Oh, we killing, we spinning. Next time I'm give y'all weight check. Watch out. So speaking of girl dad, yeah, we lost Kobe this year. <sighs> it's been a rough one. Before we before we get into that, you know. This is our first episode. Um, I lost a dear friend not too long, too long ago, Derwin Lauderdale. Um, we played ball together at Southwest Baptist University. His number was number one. So I want to dedicate this, this first episode to him. You know, number one episode for my boy D-Lot, number one. Love you, bro. Number one. But yeah, 2020, man, for it's been rough, you know, not only this whole pandemic thing, but I feel like, like the death has, at least for me, has like hit closer to home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I was, and it's, and it's crazy that you bring that up because I was just talking to my, one of my big bros, Antion, about it. Like I think literally like yesterday, and it's been crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like you know you always know that life is short and that you can go at any time. But I feel like this year has been a like a big reminder for me. You know, you know, I was a big Kobe fan. My dad is a big Kobe fan. Um, it's where I get my frat name from. My frat, my line name is Black Mamba. That's why I get that from. Um, and then right after that, I lost one of my, another one of my teammates, um, Steve. He was a cop in Arkansas. He was shot and killed. And it's just like, you know, it's so many people, you know, it's close to me that's lost close loved ones or, you know, like favorite artists or, or actor. Um, Sean Connery just died. Sean Connery. Um, What's his name that played uh, Black Panther? Oh, Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Oof. Boseman. Man, that was a rough one. <sighs> that was as rough as Kobe, I think. Yeah. I put Because, but you know, it's a little bit easier when you kind of see it coming. Yeah. You know, when like uh, someone's sick. Yeah. But we didn't even know he was sick. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. When he left, he didn't just leave. He left us with a lesson. Like, you don't know what people got going on. You don't know what people got going on, and your circle needs to be tight. Airtight. 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 Like, I think I think that was the thing that touched me the most was that no one in his camp told. Yeah. He's, I mean, I was watching, like, Spike, a Spike Lee interview, because they did the five, the five Bloods together, mm -hmm. and he was saying, I had no idea, and I would not have made him do X, Y, Z, and it's like... I, mean, I would imagine like an actor like Chadwick and a director like Spike. Like if you're on the set together, you're close. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you got a close relationship because the chemistry's got to be there. Mm -hmm. And Spike didn't even know. Like that's crazy. And 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 another you know another thing that you have to look at too with that is that anybody could could have gave that up for clout or headline or they could have sold that shit to TMZ. That was that was to. one thing I was thinking about. Like you know anybody has camp. Could have sold it for you know that's a big story, yeah. But on the on the point of Chadwick that he was able to, he did some classic films. Cause I think he was bound for like four years. Yeah. So Thurgood Marshall, Thurgood Marshall, Black, Black Panther. Panther. 
the both Avengers movies. Uh, all three Avengers. Twenty One Bridges. That was a good movie. Um, the Five Bloods. It was. It's another one. This one that hasn't come out yet too. There's another Chadwick Boseman. But either way, he was able to continue to put a high caliber workout. Yeah. Even though he was battling something that literally took his life. That's crazy. Which goes back to, you know, your 75 hard challenge to where, you know, there's things in life that test us, but we have to find a way to keep pushing through it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, obviously cancer and your 75 hard challenge are two different levels, but, you know, at the same time, that's the, that's the thing that you had to bear in your life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the end. So whatever that challenge is that you're going through, you have to find a way to push through it and maintain a level of excellence. That's it. Yeah. That's the standard. And I feel like when once everybody gets that standard, you know, we'll elevate to a, a point to where nothing can stop you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's what? a lot. I mean, because we, on my side, we lost, uh, I lost my stepmom this year, Jeannie, mm-hmm. Tyler Montez, a protege of mine, Joel McCoy, a mentor of mine. Uh, my stepmother's mother, or Mimi, mm-hmm. Beverly, uh, we lost her. Um, there was, I mean, yeah, there was a, there was a lot of death in the media and the mm-hmm. death in Hollywood. Uh, Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen died. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Betty White, keep going though. <laughs> Betty White, man, Takashi Six Nine still out there. Yeah, we need to fix that. I mean, that's. We lost King Vaughn. King Vaughn. Which, I was talking to my boy T about this. I was like, so he put me on to Lil Durk. Mm-hmm. King Vaughn was Lil Durk's man, right? So, when he put me on to Lil Durk, you know, I'm big on watching interviews. So, I watched an interview with Lil Durk, and King Vaughn was on an interview with him. And so, then, I kind of started trying to, you know, start listening to Lil Durk music get to King Von and it's crazy how right when I start to get into King Von this whole situation with him in Atlanta happens yeah which once again goes back to you always know that death is around the corner and it could happen to anybody no matter your age your color anything but it's, it's just like 2020 we've we've really had at least me I've really had these constant reminders that you have to Take advantage of your time that you got here. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And pop smoke, pop smoke, and it's just like it's just like it's just like these constant. It's like you, you and it and it's and it's crazy because you, you there's two sides to it. You get to this point to where you're like grind, grind, grind because I don't know how much time I got. But then it's other part of it that's just like man, I just want to live as much as I can because I don't yeah. know how much time I got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is and this is constant pull. Of trying to figure out what side to give into, and that's why the goal is to make your grind living. <laughs> Say that again. Hey, run that back. Run that <laughs> no, back. Seriously, like you, you got to make your grind living. So find something that you're, you know, you're passionate about. That that either something that you're good at or something that you can get good at. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then just find a way. To make that your grind, and 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 you know, so it can provide you with that living that you're trying yes. to. So, yes, you can do. Like, it's, if you can, if you can grind without it feeling like a grind. I mean, I don't know what other kind of you know. I, 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 did, I did, there is. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's just like it's just like um, kind of when we talk about work. If you're doing something that you love, it's not work. Yeah, you know I'm saying exactly. Um. Also, you know, with me when I grind, I don't I don't grind. I don't per se grind for me. I grind for the people around me and the people after me. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of yeah. trying to lay the groundwork so my kids, my kids' kids don't have to grind as hard. Yeah. Or necessarily grind in the way that I had to grind. Yeah. Um. I like that. I like that. That make your grind. That was that was nice. Yeah. That was nice. That's all the top of the dome, baby. Hey, freestyle. And <laughs> hey, we're going to start a freestyle Speaking on the podcast. Speaking ahead, bro, I seen this headline. 
and it made me proud to be an American. I think an Iowa man was banned from Yellowstone National Park for trying to fry chicken in a hot spring. <laughs> so <laughs> this man <laughs> brought like he brought chicken to the park, raw chicken. I don't know if he seasoned it. I don't know his name. You know what I'm saying? Like I you know, I don't know. Was it black or white? I didn't even I don't know. I don't know. I'm not looking it up right now. It doesn't matter. It does matter. I mean if we're trying to figure out if it was seasoned, sure. But like, <laughs> <laughs> like for the sake of the story, it doesn't matter. But he he's I don't know if he had a basket, if he put him on a skewer, it was like a full chicken, if it was wings. But a man, and he got char- he got charged like a thousand dollar fine over one piece of chicken. That I don't know how many, much chicken, and I don't know what bacteria in the chicken does to the hot springs. I don't know, but this man tried to fry chicken in a hot spring. You know the try to get a the hot spring uh, salmonella poisoning. I was like, can you imagine? That's hilarious. That's something I would do drunk. Like, yo, let's go down the hot springs so we can cook this chicken. No, I would, I would never think of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you know, I like to have you back on a lot of things. <laughs> but, uh, like, well, I mean, what possesses you to, you know, you just sit out of the house. I got this perfectly good stove. I got a perfectly good grill. <laughs> We're going to do something different. I think it's just let's one of those. hot springs. Where's the hot springs at anyways? Where's that at? Yellowstone National Park. No, I'm saying, like, where's Yellowstone? Where's that at? Iowa, I think. It's over in the Midwest. No, I can't be in Iowa. I'm pretty sure. I'm not really good with geography. Hey, bro, you're going to be a meme after this. Oh, because I don't know where Yellowstone <laughs> National Park is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just one of those things where, and I, I'm guilty of this, like, doing something just to say you did it. Like, that's the only thing you get out of it, is you're able to say you did it. Like, it could, it's something stupid, but it's, you know, it's something that no one's really done. I've never heard of a person trying to... Fro- I, feel, I feel like they could be in a world record book. Maybe. It's Old Faithful. That's the name of that famous geyser over there, that underground volcano. I don't know. I'm going to... Let's, let's switch topics. Let's talk about something else before I start sounding like an idiot. Talking about something I don't know what I'm talking about. Hey, bro, you already sound stupid to me. All right, man. <laughs> so that Javante Davis fight... I like Take. to say Baltimore versus everybody. I ain't even from Baltimore. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. So, we noticed something that night watching the coverage of the fight. What we noticed? The, um, so, whether it's on sports stations or oh. news stations. Yes. All right, this is a double standard, man. Like, if there's an announcer or a reporter or a sportscaster, somebody that's holding a microphone, reporting into a camera, mm-hmm. and it's a woman, she's got to be pretty. Yes. You never see, you never see an ugly reporter. Yes. Beauty and eye behold it all that. You know what I'm saying? Like overall, people like just recognize that she's a beautiful woman. Yes. Exactly. She's something pleasant to look at. But the dudes they put in front of these cameras, man. Yo, I'm look, man. I'm not here to judge a man or how he looks, but it's clear, crystal clear, that there are two totally different standards. Yes, yes. And you would think by now that we are past that. Yeah. But we're it. And you know what's crazy? I've never noticed that until you pointed it out. And then my mind immediately went to every thing that I watched. First take, um Pardon the interruption. Pardon the interruption. Uh any of those where they have a woman, it is. It's like that. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even know I don't I can't even think of a reason why that would be. Cause men ain't Maybe. shit. But all, I think I think also this other I, I I do think I know what a reason I think the main reason is because sports, which is also this is also a sexist thing that sports is mainly watched by men. I know that's not sexist. That's statistics. Is it really still a? Is that really still yeah. true? I don't know. Yeah, I would be willing to bet that on a percentage basis, like people that follow sports, it's it's 
more what, men than women. Is it way more men? Is it like 51 to 49 percent? Or I'll probably say, if I had to guess, I'll probably say it's probably like 65, 35. So if, if that's the case, then that's probably why. Oh, I'm sure it is. Because they're like, they're like, okay, our main demographic that's watching this are men. Yeah. Men don't really care how the men look. Yeah. But they like to see a nice looking woman. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> but it's, man, yeah, it's lopsided. As fuck. I mean, granted, I'm not complaining because I love. I'm complaining because I, I got, I'm a girl dad now. Oh, fair enough. That's so, right. Hey, we got to. Hey. Yeah, that's my baby. E, that's you my can niece. Do anything and everything you ever want to do. Word to Kamala. Yeah. So, stop. Hey, think it's a game. You want to? You want to be a, a boxer? <laughs> Got it. Because you've been kicking in your mama belly anyway. <laughs> Might be UFC or something, but just baby. make sure you don't come out with a glass jaw like your daddy. Yeah. Because mm, see, my junk messed up. <laughs> oh man. So. Football with this whole COVID shit has been really interesting. I don't think I don't think it's so part of football, right? Is the crowd yeah. and adjusting your play calling and your scheming to the crowd. So, for instance, if you're in, say, the Superdome. Where or Baltimore or Seattle, Seattle, yeah, where the crowd is known to be a factor, yeah. If there's a crowd and you're on the five yard line or fourth and inches, you can't make a hard count to get the the, the defense to jump off sides because the defense can't hear you. <laughs> but now, without fans, you know, quarterbacks are able to lean on that as a mechanism to get you know that fourth and inches or that fourth and two. Or whatever you know what I'm saying because they don't have the crowd aspect but it also makes it I think I think the crowd makes puts more excitement and drama yes, I mean for sure I mean but any, I think without the crowd though it's football in its rawest form and there's something to be appreciated there as well what do you mean by in its rawest form? like the pickup game that you play with your boys with no pads at the back of the high school tackle full contact just nitty-gritty out there, you know, just this football. Like, yes, the crowd is a, a huge part of it, but like, we would go out and play football without a crowd and love it. And it's that that element. But also, how old the, were you? The pure. You were a child. Mm-hmm. The last time I did it, I was like a couple years ago. See, most time when that happens, you're a child. It definitely happened when I was a kid. So, once you get to a point when you're in the NFL. And you've been playing since you were eight. Mm-hmm. Football at that point, that said, not my may not be fun. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a business. You're, it's the way you pay your bills. Right. So you 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 almost need that energy from the crowd to kind of get you going, to get your blood boiling. And yeah, I think it plays. I think that's why the crowd definitely plays a big role. I'm just saying, like. In the absence of the crowd, mm-hmm. you got to find that Something, lion yeah. within yourself. Yeah, I agree. And I think, then it's not every player. Not every player is able to do it. Some every, you know, but but when you you because you can watch a game and you can tell who's hungry and who's not. Speaking of who's hungry, A. B. <laughs> or Brady. I don't know who's hungrier in that situation. Probably A. B. How much do they pay him? Like a minimum middle, wage? Like a Skittles and bag of peanuts? <laughs> you think he's going to have a big impact? Yes. You think he's got his shit together? I don't know. I'm not convinced. Because, and and this is the thing with A.B., man. I think A.B. had a big... And he might may still have this a bunch of yes men around him. Okay. And what annoys me is because A B was not a first round draft pick. He wasn't the number one draft pick. I'm pretty sure I want to say he was 
I don't remember what round he was at, but he won in the first round. I don't even think he was in the second round. Yeah. So, you had to make a come up. You had to work your behind off to get to the top tier wide receiver that you were. Yeah. Or are. You still are. So, when you come from a background to where you had to work to get to that point, once you get to that point, I feel like you should not, you should not forget where you came from. Do not let your behind get too big for your britches because you end up in a point to where he would where he where he's at now to where he's thankful to get a chance yeah you know what i'm saying and yeah. you know he he did what he did when he was at he was at pittsburgh and then he got to oakland and he had i think 50 mil guaranteed no he had 50 mil contract had 30 mil guaranteed all he had to do was shut up. <laughs> to Tuesday. To Tuesday. And he would have had that 30 mil guaranteed. But because he had a bunch of yes men around him, you know, it made him feel that he didn't need the NFL. He didn't need this. He didn't need that. You know what I'm saying? And I think he lost sight of of what, what it was really about. You know what I'm saying? It's about the game of football and providing for your family. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean I don't I don't know but you know like um, Shannon Sharp said I think a couple of days ago he was like you know when he left Oakland I want to say he was like you know I got my stuff together blah 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 this then third and then he got in trouble when he got to New England because I think he like messaged the girl or something like that or whatever and that's what. I don't know, man. I I, I I pray. He's isn't he rooming with Tom Brady? So that's that's the thing that's that I think is working on his at, to his advantage. Is that you think I think he's keeping Tom, him in line. I think Tom is gonna keep him in line. Yeah, because Tom is a phenomenal leader. So long as AB don't get left alone with Giselle, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna edit that out. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, so it's uh. Episode one, baby. Like we're here. We're here. One of many. And uh, you know, just off the jump, I'm sure you could say the same thing. But there's there's some people that I know that have been supportive and motivated me and asked me and taken an interest. Um, and I would imagine people that you know on your side. You've had the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't think we really plan on, in future podcasts, like, doing segments. You know what I'm saying? Like, having, like, set segments. I think we're just going to let it flow. Mm -hmm. But uh, being the first episode, there's a lot of people, or some people, however many people that know me, that don't know you. Mm -hmm. People that know you, that don't know me. Who's that white boy? (laughs) (laughs) Um, hey, you know who you are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I feel like uh, this is a good time to do that three questions. So, what we're gonna do is I came up with three questions to ask you, okay. so the audience can get to know you, and then you do the same thing. And I guess we'll just go back and forth one for one. You want me to start? Yeah, you start. Okay. So first of all, how old are you? And of those years that you've existed on this earth, how many of them have you not been shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh man first of all I gotta remember how old I am I don't, I don't really get that question a lot I think I'm 25 you think you sure yeah I'm I'm 25 um birthday January 14th so if any of y'all out there want to give me my birthday present please holler at your boy DM me I see my email and my address so you can send me a birthday present um shameless plug but I mean, I, you know, I I've been an upstanding guy, you know, my entire life, you know. Um, bro, that's messed up, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. Look, look. Hey, the man. idea, the idea, right? It's just, is the audience just a fly on the wall? I'm gonna keep a buck fifty with you. All right, I'm gonna keep a buck fifty, cause that's that's all we do on this on this podcast. We keep it all the way a hundred buck fifty. 
I started off as the nice guy. And then my mom sat me down and was like, the nice guy finished last. No woman likes a nice guy. That's because women always comes first. No, okay, my bad. I'm done. Go ahead. Big facts. <laughs> you follow that rule, you're going to be straight. Always look out for her. Make sure she get hers. But she, I mean, she basically sat me down and was like, look, the nice guy don't get nowhere. No one likes a woman. No woman likes a man that's too nice. You got to bring a little asshole to it. And so I did that, and I just haven't looked back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mom, mom set you on a path and just let you go. Yeah, hey, <laughs> hey, always listen to Sugarfoot. All right, that's my Sugarfoot. Hey, I love you, Sugarfoot. You know you're my baby. But yeah, I mean, she 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 put me on to that, and it was just like I, I mean, back hey, I mean, and, and, and she that, obviously knew what she was talking about because you're sitting here with a dope ass wife and baby Ellie on the. On the way. And she loves me and she knows I'm an asshole. And she accepts it. Despite. She loves you despite it. Yeah. That's crazy. I think it brings... It keeps it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I can't relate because I'm a fucking sweetheart. But... Alright. You got the... So we lying on camera now? So... So we... is yours for the question. I mean, I think it's your turn. So, um... From Baltimore. Fill that in. Uh, talk about dying and coming back to life. Okay, so first of all, because <laughs> I don't want anybody to think I'm like false claiming anything. I had, spent a lot of time in Baltimore. Oh, I've been all throughout Baltimore, mm -hmm. but I spent the majority of my time growing up in Glen Burnie, which is about 15 minutes south of Baltimore. Okay. So I don't want, want anybody to think that the gringo set tripping or nothing like that. <laughs> right? So. Uh, I claim it hey, because Peter I love Bryce. I love hey. the city, <laughs> family. I, hey yo, I, 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 did, I didn't live there a lot, you know what I'm saying? But we'll get, you know that's that's neither here nor there. Um, dying. I thought we were gonna wait till February 14th mm -mm. because that was the anniversary. Mm -mm. No, okay. We right to the heart. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, so what he's alluding to is February 14th, 2012, I had open heart surgery. Uh, they literally took my heart out of my chest completely. Mm -hmm. uh, I had mitral valve prolapse and it ended up getting really, really bad. Uh, so they had to repair, the, do a valve repair. Um, and they did that. And I was out for like 11 hours. Uh, I saw nothing. I remember nothing. Mm -hmm. I remember. I remember being wheeled in the operating room, high as hell on all the drugs they were giving me, and like I was literally I was 21, mm -hmm. and I'm just being wheeled in, right? I'm in the gown and I'm lucid and loopy and blah blah blah, and I'm like, "Who's ready to party?" <laughs> like as these motherfuckers about to kill me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know I. Look, man, I've had a lot of things happen in my life that brought, like, profound meanings and had, you know, were symbolic and taught me something. The only thing that really taught me is, like, how dope modern medicine is. Like, there was no deep. I didn't see no light or nothing mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I'm just grateful that medicine and technology and doctors are at the level where they caught it, monitored it, and then fixed it and put me back in the world like it's nothing. Dope scar though, chicks dig it. Hey, that touched my heart. And then it also brings a lot of heart <laughs> jokes, which I always appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> so right. to that. So, question number two for you, sir. What regiment do you follow, or what habits do you have to keep your mental health a one? Oh man. There's a, the main. I think the main one would be um, working out. Yeah. Um, I'm a firm, 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 firm believer in mental health because I feel like if the mind is not right, everything else is gonna be out of whack. Yeah. Um, 
so my first go-to is working out you know being very very active and consistent in the gym a lot of people they're not consistent and they're not you know um willing to put in that work but it's, it, it goes hand in hand mind and body works hand in hand yeah so you know my main thing is working out um and then just being able to verbally communicate with those around you. You have to have a strong core around you of people that can keep you, one, level-headed, two, that are not yes men or women, and three, um, that have the knowledge to give you, to set you in the right direction. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You cannot be, you should not be the smartest one in your group. If you are, there's a problem. Um, so those three things, Shit. those three things are, are what I lean on, you know, that's, and I, I've, I've been talking about, I need to get a therapist. Oh, I definitely recommend it. Two things. If you get a therapist, you need two things. One, you need to go in there with a specific goal. Therapy is, is only effective if and you're talking to somebody who's spent a lot of time in therapy mm-hmm. since like a kid to an adult and everywhere in between. You gotta have a goal. It could be specific, like I want to get over this specific trauma, or I haven't gotten mm-hmm. over this. Or it could be broad, like I want to improve my self confidence. But whatever it is, you have mm-hmm. to have a goal. Second, you gotta understand, like the way I see it in my experience, a lot of people that, especially ones that have never been to therapy, think like they're gonna sit there. They got all this experience and schooling behind them, mm-hmm. all this studying, so they're just gonna hit you with a couple of fucking quotables that you see in memes and it's going to change your life and no that's not it like like they don't do anything they do a lot but like the work you do the work they're just there to kind of like put the like the the bumper guards when you're bowling okay. to keep you in line you yeah, know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, like yeah like it's it's mainly you talking through things and finding your way and then just kind of nudging you when you need it yeah because because when you're working on something, when it, you know, with regards to mental health, it's important that you figure out the solution. Mm-hmm. Because if they tell you what the solution is and it works, now you're telling yourself that you can't even fix yourself. They did it. Mm. If they give you the solution and it doesn't work, now you resent them. Yeah, now you're blaming them. Exactly. Okay. But if you come up with a solution and try and it doesn't work, all that teaches you is accountability. Mm-hmm. And if you figure it out and it does work, now you boost your self confidence and you believe in yourself a little bit more because you came up with something and you made it work. So that, like, if you do go to therapy, which I highly recommend, um, have a specific goal and just know that it's it's a long road and they're just they're more like they're, they're, don't get me wrong they're super intelligent, trained, and important people. Like I could not do what they do, mm-hmm. but they're not as intrusive as many people who've never been to therapy thing in my experience yeah yeah so question number two boss what you got what you got baby so explain to our viewers how pool shooting pool plays into our relationship (laughs) how many countries have we been to together um yeah like both of us probably like 10 10, yeah, 12. like yeah, experience together, like 10, 12, 10 or twelve countries. Overall, oh, between the two, yes, yeah, a lot. We'll get it another yeah. time, but um, that's how we grew close. We are international, undefeated billiard champions. Hey, emphasis on undefeated. All right, undefeated. Anybody that want that smoke? Oman, undefeated. Bahrain, undefeated. Uh, what else? Where else? Seychelles? Was Seychelles one of them? Seychelles. Seychelles undefeated. There's one more. It was it Israel, or Israel. was it Greece? Israel. Israel. It was in Greece. Israel yeah. undefeated. Virginia undefeated. Come on. Come and that's on, how we got close. That's we. So we a little bit more in depth. We, you know, we were stationed together, and um, we were converse with each other. Every now and then, it's bullshit while yeah. we're eating during a meal or yeah, something. A meal or something, and then one day we're out, and he needed a pool partner. And pool is just kind of like spades; you yeah. can't just be playing with anybody. Yeah. And so you like, hey, I need some. I got you. I'm like, bro, can you really play? I got you. <laughs> Come on.
come on, baby. I'm conf. Hey, the, the few things that I am good at, baby. I <laughs> so, and then I'm like, can you play though? Why are you asking me? And it was just, it was just on and on from there. We would start busting people left and right, talking that smack, and we just kept it going. The most impressive one was Oman, because not only did we beat these dudes. But there's no way we were we were barely able to at least for me, I was barely able to walk in Oman. Yeah, we were we were highly intoxicated. I, I well, you were definitely more intoxicated than I was, <laughs> but because I kind of stopped drinking because I didn't want us to lose. And I remember you kept buying drinks because you bought out the bar that night. Yeah. And I, I remember telling you, I'm like, bro, I just need you to be to stand up. And not mess this game up for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I vaguely remember that. I think I had the dreams about that. <laughs> and you're like, I got you. I remember the bus back. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think for me, I think Bahrain actually was my my favorite. Yeah, because do you still have that picture? I want to say yes. It's on on some of my laptop. You gotta look it up, man. That was that's like mixtape cover material. Yeah. Right, so my third question. You ready? You want to take a shot? That's my third question. You want to take a shot? <laughs> that's, that's, third that's my third question. <laughs> that's cheating. That's not cheating. Yeah, because I then I'm not going to come up with a third question. Yet. Let me get some of that peach. It just ain't left. No, it's probably not. Sorry. Wow. That's not even a full shot. Hey, man. I don't know what you want from me. All right. I killed this. You did. Well, when we blow up, I'm gonna I'm need I'm gonna need uh, Crown, Crown Royal, Royal and Jack Daniels to give us that bag. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because I need mine because I'm advertising yeah. for y'all and it's do red, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? You know what I'm saying? When you start wondering where your wave game came from, that's where it came from. All right, should we do one of my toasts? Yeah, do one of your toasts for the battles we fought. To the battles we won, to America's Navy and all of our guns, to the dress blues that make all the panties damp. Here's to the back to back World War Champs. Salute. Tattoo. Tat, 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 tattoo. <laughs> shit like that, shit like that. <laughs> we did it, baby. Hey man, episode one in the books, baby. Yes, sir. If you like what you heard, if you got any suggestions, what you'd like to hear next time, drop a comment, DM. But most of all, hit that subscribe and like button. And share, share, share. Share, share. Tell your mama, your cousin, your daughter, your dog. <laughs> tell all of them. Your boss. Tell all of them. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, what? Twitter. Of course, YouTube. I'm your boy. This your boy. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> yeah, baby. We out. We out.